Scare him away here. Video. Here we go. Leaving Billings. Heading for Fairbanks. Where you're gonna find there's two 70 inch bulls right there. Are they tied up for us? Yeah, they, I, we, yeah, we lassoed them last season. All right, I made it to Fairbanks. Finally, all day travel. We are in the hotel, got all of our gear. We are waiting for Dr. Robert, PhD from the University of Fairbanks, to come by. We're gonna help with a wilderness um, health type study. And he's gonna show us what kind of samples we gotta do. We gotta get some freaky injections or something. I don't know isotopes. What's going on. Isotopes. We think that there are some health benefits of backcountry hunting. Um, I think there's benefit anytime you're active. I mean, your mm -hmm. muscles and brain, they don't really think about whether you're in a gym or not. They just think about mm -hmm. the activity that you're doing. Or not think, but they just respond to it. We're interested in finding out um, what type of health benefits are associated with backcountry hunting? You need to drink all of that, okay? Both of you, for, for you, all of this, okay, Brennan? For you, Casey, all of that. Made it up to Alaska here. This is just awesome. Um, cooler weather this year. We've got it's supposed to be highs in the 40s and 50s. It's raining this morning, so we're fogged in. Um, nothing we can do but just wait for it to break here and then go cover some country. Uh, saw a couple nice bulls coming in yesterday. They just weren't in a good spot. So we got camp set up. Um, living in Alaska, hunting caribou doesn't get any better than this. UAF uh, for more follow-up and testing as the start of the survival fitness study that we're doing with Dr. Coker and uh, find out more what we have to do while we're on the, the trip. Like you're going up a hill and you're almost there. Keep going. This is hard to believe. 20 years of waiting, at least. You did it.
right, here we go, always an adventure. We got some caribou, they're off in the distance out here, so we blew up our raft, and uh, we're just making it across this river, all the different channels here, and once we get over there, see if we can make something happen. It's a few miles over, but um, it's a chance at some caribou, so here we go. Right now. <laughs> you don't know until you know, right? Hey, just crossing the channels here. Trying to keep dry. It's pretty braided down here. That was close. Um, we're just getting these quick plays at these caribou. You know, we're seeing them move and go in a direction and we're just trying to hustle and get in front of them. So we're running, beads of sweat coming down, bugs, but we're hunting caribou and there's some giant bulls out of here. So we just gotta keep trying. We just gotta keep after them and get in front of one and get a shot. All right, day two of the float. It is a cool, frosty morning. We're gonna get on the raft here in a couple hours and keep floating. We covered a pretty good distance yesterday. It was about 12 miles we covered on the river, even after getting a late start, which was good. And we even had time to stop and look at some caribou for a while, look at some dead ones that we saw, or antlers shining up on the hillside. So, anyway, here we go. like a tree standing up there at the pier.
big old caribou, buddy. You're in Alaska. <laughs> Casey got his first caribou. Came out of that raging river. Right down there when he shot. Down that sandbar, or the other bar. And he made a heck of a shot. His tops are huge, he's all palmated. Look at that caribou, Casey. Beautiful shovel. Here we go. Day four, we spotted some caribou. There's like four good bulls on this bench. So cross the river, now we're over here on the other side. We're gonna give them a go. May have to circle all the way around them to get on them, but there's a good bull in there and um, we'll just give it some good effort and see if we can't go get on them. Man, oh man, we had those bulls bedded. We had to cheat the wind. We got in close. I was in range of the, the two medium-sized ones, but there was just a giant in the herd trying to get a shot at him. And um, he ended up circling around catching my wind, but that's why I bow hunt. I mean, to be up here on the north slope and get a stalk like that, that's just incredible. But um, close, all I can do is just keep trying. The day's still young, got a couple days left. Really gonna try to get narrow in a good caribou here. No, we got a heck of a mess this morning. We're going down the next stretch of river, and to say we have a sweeper problem would be an understatement. And the hole's too deep. We can't uh, get out there and cut it. So we have to portage around. Casey is probably gonna float right over the middle of it because his uh, raft drafts better than mine does. That's what I hear.
Played a legal bowl. Fun to see though. Came into our calls. Recurve well, has him duped. <laughs> he wants to come across that river so bad, but it's so deep right here. Man, it's too bad he's not legal. We have a bowl tonight. He's gonna walk across that river. Say something to him. Trying to scare him away here. So we're in close. We're inside 60 yards. I'm going to creep about 20 yards more on this caribou and see if we can't get a shot. Well, here he is, caribou bull down. What an amazing experience up here in the North Slope. To be able to chase these caribou around the tundra, uh, it, it's just really something that everybody should experience. And um, They have their challenges, they're perfectly suited for the muskeg, but we were able to catch up to this nice palmated bull and put a good arrow in them. I'm just absolutely stoked. What a cool hunt. It, just only a few bugs around. <laughs> they're getting crazy now that we've killed a bull, but uh, you can't wipe this smile off my face. It doesn't matter how many bug bites I get, but uh, it's just absolutely awesome. When you're in a location or doing something that you've wanted to do for so many years, over 20 years I wanted to come to Alaska, and here we are. It's just weird. It's a good weird, but it's weird. We're finally here after all this waiting. All right, we are here at the pickup point, and we got Larry and Terry. Whoop, 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 whoop. They just showed up. They're the private investigators of the backcountry up here in Alaska. They were illegally following us. No authorization. <laughs> I did not sign that form. <laughs> On this hunt, Casey and I got to take part in a wilderness health study. Uh, through the University of Fairbanks, through our contacts at Pristine Ventures with Larry Bartlett and his contacts with the university and Dr. Robert Coker, we were asked if we wanted to take part in this study on our 12-day wilderness excursion in the backcountry in Alaska. Now, the title of the study is kind of fancy. It's the caloric costs and the met metabolic benefits of wilderness hunting in Alaska. Basically, what that means is once and for all, they want to do a study that's never really been done before just to see what kind of energy was expended and what your body goes through on a wilderness hunt. And this really pertains to backcountry hunting uh, in the lower 48, when you're backpack hunting or even ho hunting off a horseback for days on end. And uh, in particular, the, the rugged uh, activities that you have to go through on a, on a float hunt like we were on. <laughs> it is day three and we've absolutely lost our minds. One of the things that we did is the day before or the days before that we went into the backcountry, we had blood samples taken, and then we also had to provide urine samples before we went into the backcountry and then when we came out. And then also we had to take urine samples every single day 
when we were in the backcountry, which added a little bit level of complexity, as you could probably imagine carrying around vials of that stuff wherever we were going. But it was very necessary to the study so that they could test what our body was doing on every single day. And we had to keep detailed daily diaries of our food intake so they could um, examine the caloric count and fat content and everything that we were putting into our bodies. And then both before and after the hunt, we had to go to their lab at the University of Fairbanks and ride an exercise bike with a breathing apparatus on our head so they can measure the output that our body was putting out both uh, pre and post hunt, as well as scans in an MRI machine and a DEXA machine. Dr. Coker and his team have defended this study in front of a peer-reviewed board and it is actually officially published now and they're going to continue to do more work on this so that we as hunters can really dial in you know the caloric intake that we need uh, to maintain certain energy levels and then also just understand what's going on you know so that we can be healthy and safe and secure in the backcountry.